All righty. Hello and welcome to the 81st episode of South Africa's most accessible consumer technology podcast, Overclocked ZA. All the vowels in it, no spaces, no underscores, just Overclocked ZA. Beautiful, it's simple. I am Lindsay Shooters, dead opinion guy on the internet, sharpshooters on social media, and I'm joined as always by the editor of Tech Magazine. And can we finally say it, Gavin? Can you introduce yourself? No, no, no. Next week we'll say it. Next week we'll say it. Let's just, let's just keep the suspense going for one more week. We'll talk about my new venture next week. No, in all seriousness, next week we take the wraps off things. Proper. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Gavin Dudley, well known in all tech spaces. Luminary, the venerable one. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Now, when Lindsay says the most accessible podcast, he's not joking. I mean, I go through the show notes and in my head, I write out all the acronyms and I take all the concepts and break them down in my head because we don't want you to get stuck on stuff. You know, it's just tech acronyms. It's just tech terms. It's all perfectly explainable in plain English. And that's what we want to do. We want to keep you informed, but uh, we don't want you to stumble over any of the tech, uh, the tech vocabulary that pops up that alienates people. We want you to be included in the tech discourse. So that's why we call ourselves the most accessible. Yes. Yes. And because we are short and sharp and to the point and unpretentious as possible. Right. Yes. So, Gavin, it's been a terrible time. Actually, it, it hasn't been that bad for smartphone shipments. They, they're, not, they're not down as much as we expected. I mean, there's nothing like cars that are down. Ooh, yeah. Lost you, man. I don't know if you can hear me, but I've lost you. Oh, am I am I back? Oh, now you're back. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, I told you that that, that was gonna happen. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. Take uh, morning, where yeah. can you talk us through some of these these stats counter analytics that you came across? Yeah. So you know when you go smartphones. What's everybody's first response? Everybody's first response is iPhone, Apple iPhone. The truth is iPhone accounts for a very small, not very small, let's say a relatively small percentage of the market. Actually, it's just very big in Europe. It's kind of big in, in Asia. It's very big in the States. But actually, iPhone really accounts for more like a quarter of the market. So they make a lot of money. They make more money than anybody else. But actually, in terms of the number of phones shipped, it's not nearly as big as the Android phones. The Android world is much, much bigger than the Apple world. And uh, Huawei obviously fits into that Android world. So, for example, last year, Apple shipped 200 million phones. Huawei alone, that's just one Android manufacturer, shipped 240 million phones. That's last year. And that's just one. That's without Samsung, who's the biggest. And without LG, Oppo, and Vivo, and a whole lot of others, you know, who are still playing in that space. So just to get a sense of how Apple is very influential, but is not by far the biggest manufacturer. That's Huawei, well, that's Huawei and Samsung. So Samsung shipped 300 million units. So I'll just run those down again. That's Samsung, 300 million units. Huawei, 240 million units. Apple, 200 million units. Okay, so you get an idea. It's something like 60, it's about 70% of the market is Android. Um, so when Huawei gets locked out of the Android market by Donald Trump and his cronies who have decided for whatever reasons that Huawei can't ship phones or any equipment over there, it forces Huawei to think seriously about its relationship with that Android market, which is then controlled by an American company being Google. And, you know, I think that sits uncomfortably with them. And it's driven them to look for a way to power their phones on their own. And this is a great idea. The truth is they have still got Android on the phone. They just can't use the Google apps that go with it. That's Google Maps and all the other Google services that go with it. But it's driven them to, to rely more on themselves to provide those experiences to their customers. And this is a good thing. And if they play their cards right with the operating system that they've created called Harmony, um, Harmony OS, Harmony Operating System, if they play their cards right with this, they could actually break the stranglehold that Google and American companies have over the mobile phone market at the moment. So if Android accounts for 70% of the market, that's an American company. Apple accounts for the other 30%. Both American companies control the cell phone market. But China 
through Huawei could come out as the next big player if they can push their operating system hard enough. So mm. we're all very keen to get our first taste of how this might work out. The first phone that I personally will be using without the Google services on it is the Huawei P40 Lite, which is due to arrive with me any time in the next couple of days, hopefully. And that will be my first experience. But because I already see that it's a good thing to break down the American control of the cell phone market, I've already given it bonus points ahead of you know, actually receiving the phone. Maybe that's not cool, but that's been my attitude towards it so far. Um, because I do think that it's possible for just two players in the market to actually slow down the rate of innovation. We actually need more players to open up the market for greater innovation. That's been my position. So next week, with any luck, we'll be talking about the Huawei P40 Lite and its lack of Google services and what it means for you as a consumer, whether it's okay for you to have this phone or not. And then we might also be talking about the Samsung A31. So Samsung shipped all those amazing phones, but their biggest sellers are not, when you think of Samsung, you think of the S series, you think of the Note series, but their biggest sellers are always the A series and they have a new A in the market, which is the A31, building on that whole idea of awesome screen, awesome camera, last long lasting battery life. The A31 comes to you with a 6.4 inch AMOLED display, a beefy at 128 gigs of internal memory, there's USB Type C. Um, it's the Infinity U display, so it has a little U, little notch, little, little thing, so no hole punches. Um, and I think it's going to be quite good. I think it's going to do a lot better than A51. It's launching at 7,000 Rand, if I'm not mistaken. May um, I ask I where, could... you got, where you got your pricing from? Where did you get your pricing? Because uh, I've that been was from Samsung, South Africa. Um, well, it wasn't on the. To... Oh, wasn't on the media material though, was it? Uh, no. They Did you ask to... them for the price? Yes. Oh, yes. When they okay. when they sent they said we can send you one to review, and I was like, yeah, what's the price? So so I can include it in some of the stuff that I do. Um, okay. Yeah, five thousand milliamp hour battery. It's got an octa core processor and four gigs of RAM. Um, Sorry, that's sex. South African. Can, yeah. can you say that price again, please? Sorry. Uh, it's. I actually need to pull up the email. Um, I'm going to oh. say it's 6,000 Rand. Oh, until gosh. I get the email to actually see okay. it myself. 6,000 Rand was, is what I call a mid range phone. I call a yeah. mid range phone 6,000 Rand. I think it's going to be very good for 6,000 Rand. The A70, which was the last A series, no, yeah, the A70 was one of our best phones from last year. The A71 had taken all those good things and just made it all more expensive. And then the A51 yeah. became last year's A70 kind of thing. So, I mean, yeah, it wears me out. That, <laughs> well, Samsung just loads this premium on these phones for buying a Samsung product. So what Sony used to do in Hi-Fi and other things, you kind of have to pay a little extra for the name. It's what Apple's been doing for years, you know. With yeah. Apple, you're paying literally 50% more for the name. Um, and I don't know if Samsung thinks they can get away with it. Maybe it's a calculated risk and they've gotten away with it so far. For 6,000 Rand, you can buy a lot of phone from other manufacturers, I have to say. But I'll give them the benefit, the benefit of the doubt so far. So the A31 likely to be a big seller. I hope so. Yeah. But going back to your, your more players, better freaking for everybody. Yes, I do believe in that. But where you like what you have now is you have a, the two horse race and both horses can kind of run at the same speed. Um, so I see that speed as being access to Google services, allowing people to do the work that they do, to use these phones to like integrate it into their lifestyles. And, and Huawei not having access to the Google ecosystem, where a lot of companies are working on G Suite, and as I've said before, um, that is a big barrier to entry there. Like if you are at all deciding on a phone that you're gonna integrate into your workflow, um, you probably need some sort of access to G Suite. And yeah, the workarounds, okay. they are inconsistent at best. <laughs> mm. um, and okay. not for most of us, yeah. Now, I remember when, before we actually had smartphones or mobile phones of any kind, this was the argument against Microsoft Windows. Microsoft Windows yeah. just dominated the market in the same way that Android dominates today. And the complaint was that, because they had such a big control over the market, it didn't allow any alternatives to actually mm. sort of 
break through and give the consumer more choice. But the, the flip side was that if you were a printer manufacturer, you only had to make drivers for one operating system. If you were, yeah. you know, any kind of a mouse manufacturer or keyboard manufacturer or a manufacturer of any kind of PC peripheral, you only had to make drivers for one operating system. That really speeded up and improved the ability to produce, you know, add-on services for the product. Yeah. Because, you know, everything was just focused on that one operating system. And that's what Android has benefited from uh, so far was, you know, we can have a lot more phone models because they all, none of them have to invest any money in the operating system, you know. So yeah. we'll see how this plays out. People complained and complained about Microsoft Windows having control of the market, but they forget about the benefits they got from that as well. Yeah. Mm. Talking about Microsoft, a bold conference, which is the developer conference, was this week. Um and I have two big things that I really zoomed into. So do you know how much we love the new Microsoft Edge, the Chromium version? Oh, um, yes, the new browser. It's we love it. Blue and green swirly one. Absolutely in love with it. Um, also, Andy from Gearburn, Andy Walker, also big lover, taught me a couple of tricks. I was on Ooh. a podcast with him last week. Um, the profile things that you can create. So you can create like profiles in the browser, like for yourself. Okay. So he has like a Google services profile. And right. like he has profiles for like a Facebook services profile. So he just switches between the profiles and like all the apps and he signed into everything. So wow. that he's still compartmentalizing his work and his private life. Wow. Um, That's yeah, interesting. That's, okay. So, so they've improving the profile switching. So faster profile switching. Um, and then they creating lists. So you spoke about lists when we spoke about Microsoft Edge a yes, while there's ago. Yes, there's a service called Collections where you can clip things yeah. to save them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now Collections is integrating with Pinterest and Collections is integrating with OneNote. So whatever you do ah. in OneNote, you can then cross-reference and just work seamlessly in a right. drop-down side panel. Um, on Microsoft Edge, which is game changer for like productivity. Yeah, and for researchers like ourselves, you're constantly yeah. researching stuff. I'm sorry, are you saying that these are announcements that came out of Build? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So these are things that will come in the in the near future, and then in the longer term future, it's called the Fluid Office Document Framework. So what they are saying is, <laughs> you'll be able, <laughs> you'll be able to take like an Excel spreadsheet for instance, and take that spreadsheet into your Outlook email or in future into any app. You can pull it into like Microsoft Teams or any other chat app and right. collaborate live wow. in real time. Wow, on wow. <laughs> wow, man, that is mind-bending, so man. Completely platform agnostic and <sighs> like the, use, the other users don't have to be the collaborators don't have to be signed into Microsoft accounts. They can wow. just work on it in the app that you pulled it into, wow. which is mad. <laughs> yeah, that is crazy, man. Jeez. Okay. Yeah, so that's so some major collaboration stuff. The, okay. Yeah. The problem. The problem. End of the year, I, mean, that will go up. I mean, my revelation in recent days has been using uh, the Microsoft 365 mobile app which pulls yeah. together all the office functions into a mobile format. But they've put so much thought into how the mobile user operates differently to the desktop user. And it just works, man. It's actually genius. This thing has evolved over probably 10 years, this app's been around. It's evolved and evolved and evolved. And it really was an excellent experience, I must say. So Microsoft's got that down pat. Yeah. Yeah. They probably deserve oh, the yeah, lead they've got. There's, mm. a, there's a big resurgence coming coming from Microsoft. I mean, they've been overlooked in the past, but I think they've just been under Satya Nadella. They've just been squirreling away on like making their cloud offering yeah. seamless and yeah. brilliant, and they're just optimizing all of the software to take advantage of that. As you yeah. could see in my latest video on YouTube, that opinion guy um, on the Asus Spin One, which is a very low-powered laptop, which I managed to get a lot of like use out of just by living inside that Microsoft ecosystem. Right. Yeah, I must say, I mean, I'm finding myself increasingly resistant about going back to Google services when I've got such great services coming from Microsoft already. Mm. Mm, I must say, I'm finding more, more ways to stay with the Microsoft services, which is very impressive that they've managed to pull me away from stuff that I'm already heavily invested in, you know, like the browser thing, for example. 
It's really yeah. been a great experience. Yeah. Okay. Talking about so build. Bold Anything God, else from build? Uh, yeah, that's about it. That was the two big. Hit. There's like a lot of like behind the scenes sort of stuff. Um, importantly, uh, the announcement happened last week when the Surface, the new, or two weeks ago when the new Surface products dropped. Um, mm. Surface products are coming to South Africa at the yeah. end of the year. Yeah, now these are highly regarded all over the world. When Microsoft first started producing laptops and tablets and things, all the manufacturers were like, you know, you know Dell and HP were like, oh, why are you competing with us? You're not supposed to be competing with us. And Microsoft's whole argument was, man, we're not competing directly with you. We just want to show you what's possible using our software. So we're going to build, you know, a couple of kick-ass products. But they turned out to be so successful that they've kept up the line of hardware. Now their products do actually compete with mm laptop manufacturers and so on. And in some respects, the Microsoft products are considered superior. Actually, they just haven't really penetrated the enterprise, you know, level markets like, you know, the core large corporations and so on. But they're still highly, highly regarded. Their tablets and their laptops and increasingly their innovative desktops as well. So, yeah. 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 So Surface headphones also coming. Um, but yeah, I'm most, exciting. I'm most, I really want to get my hands on the, the, the ARM-based uh, Surface, the Surface Book What's it? The Surface X um, that's that I'm very juice. interested in. That's uh, not the no, no, no. It's the it's the Surface, but it's based on a, on an ARM processor, the one that they co-developed with Qualcomm. I speak okay. under correction. Um, right. Yeah. So it's not really well optimized, and then the the Surface Go Two, I think, is going to be a big game changer, especially in the education market for us. Can you sidebar? Yeah. Um, I was going to ask if you could. Yeah, you, you give us your sidebar first. Sorry. Yeah, sidebar. Um, my my daughter who moved over to the iPad Pro, my old iPad Pro, recently to do all the schoolwork on homeschooling. Um, Google. So the homeschool platform that she's on, it plays videos. I don't know what they're using to upload it in, but it's kind of linked to like a Google app sort of vibe. Because then the the test that she has. Service. To, yeah. yeah. Google but, has but it's service, not yeah. a Google Classroom. It's just like. It's somehow they're working through Google Docs and they're uploading the video and then there's a test like in Google Forms afterwards. Okay. Um, and these videos have ceased to play partly because my internet connection is so bad because mm. <laughs> I'm, mm. again, throttled down to two megabits per second because uh, it burns two yeah. gigs in like no time. Um, yeah. Twelve days it took us this one. And Jeez. then, so, and we, we then opened the thing on on the Microsoft Edge, on the aging Lenovo laptop that I'm using right now, and everything works fine. So she's kind of transitioned to using our old laptop as mm. using, as being a primary tool, like the education thing. So I'm very interested in what the, the Surface Go 2 has to offer, because, um, right. yeah, that would be like the, the tablet form factor, which I enjoy, because I do believe it's the future of mobile computing. Um, yes, we've, we've, we've said both, this many times. Like We're in agreement on this issue, which is yeah, rare. So I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm very... I'm I'm ready to move away from my beloved iPads. Okay, okay. The surface but I was going to ask you if you could run us down the Microsoft brands and what the product lines mean, because I find it endlessly confusing. So what is the Go? The Go is is the tablet series. Okay. So so the you know, just surface, in brief, because I mean it's going to be a while before yeah. the products actually get here, but just so that people yeah. know what to look out for. So the Surface is like a tablet, so it's a big. 14 inch tablet and then right. you connect a keyboard to that and i uh, think the stylus ships in the box as well okay. you have to buy the keyboard separately so that's like the surface that's what started it all um but then presumably it will surface. work with any it'll work with any bluetooth keyboard i'm guessing uh yeah, yeah. but okay the, the so it's essentially just like, a, a screen on its own is what you're saying yeah, yeah. with a okay. little kickstand at the back yeah right okay. then you get the surface book which is then a more high-powered tablet that clips into a keyboard base. You can remove it, and then it's a tablet, or you can clip it into the keyboard base. And in the keyboard base is a GPU and some extra memory vibes. Um, so that's like the super high-end sort of stuff. That's like the right. workstation level. Right. That's like the, the, the MacBook Pro fighter. Right. Then okay. you get the Surface Go, which is the Surface form factor shrunken to 11 inches. Um, I'm gesticulating quite wildly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's almost like me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh huh. 
Uh, yeah, so that's shrunken down. Then you, you're you getting like entry-level internal. So I think it starts with the Pentium Gold processor and four gigs of RAM. And it goes up to a core M3 with eight gigs of RAM. So that's like okay. the top end of that. So that's, yeah. So these are all called Surface. They're variations on a tablet, yes. basically. There's the yes. ultra power one, there's the standard one, and then there's the lightweight one. But they're yes. all called Surface. Yeah, okay. Yes. So the what Surface are the laptops go, called? Um, that's the Surface laptop. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, well, that didn't help us at all. It confuses us more than anything else. No wonder I'm asking you to clarify. Cause I, I'm thinking I've lost the thread, but actually it's because they named it wrong. Okay, fine. Yeah. So the Surface, the Surface, what is the laptop? The Surface laptop, uh, um, and that, that is just a normal laptop. Uh, I've kind of lost track because they haven't updated that now with the new updates, with, okay. the, with the new model that we yeah, so there's a Surface laptop, and then there's the Surface X, which is similar to the Surface Go, but it's more slimmed down. It uses a ARM processor, so like a mobile processor, and they're still trying to port like the 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 X86 and the 64-bit stuff over, or th yeah, over to to that platform. So not all the apps run yet. There's some Microsoft Store apps that you also can't run on there, but I'm very interested because the form factor really appeals to me. Um, and the okay, but how is, how is the X different to any of the others? Is it not just another tablet? It is another tablet, but it runs on the ARM processor. Okay, so it's the internals that processor. you keep referencing. I mean, basically, the form factor is all the same. It's bigger and smaller yes. tablets. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But it's a, it's a different idea of computing, and it's, it's <laughs> no, where no, no. I want the world to move. What's a, what's a different idea is that that floating screen PC they've got. What's that called? That's oh, called yes. something else. Oh, yeah. The studio, the Surface Studio. studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Very cool looking that's like thing. A, so that's basically, it's like a tablet that floats in midair, and but it actually connects to a base, which has got all the processing power inside it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like an all-in-one computer that you can recline, almost like a, a drafting disk, yes. um, which is incredible. And then there's like a dial that you can... Oh, control. Like yeah, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that gives you like all sorts of crazy... And it's a beautiful thing, but they also haven't updated that for the new... Like with new hardware and stuff. So anyway, yeah, like moving a, on. It's a concept idea that just got popular. Okay, so everything's yeah. called Surface, except the desktop thing. They're all called Surface, yeah. all different variations, including the laptop. They're all called Surface. All yeah, right. then you get they the Surface said... headphones, which has like noise <laughs> cancelling. You okay. can dial in like different levels of noise, 15 levels of noise cancelling. <laughs> okay, okay, fine. And then the Surface Buds, which are the earbuds, wireless earbuds, and they look like big disks that you kind of put inside your ears. Yes. And yes. you can control PowerPoint presentations by tapping on them in various ways. So that, I think, is everything in the Surface. And in the Surface Pen, obviously. Um, okay. So, yeah, which so is what, what, is, stylus. what do you imagine as a timeline for these products to get to South Africa? Um, Q4. So we're right, looking so at about September. Six months. Yeah. 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 Okay, so, I mean, we're giving you the heads up here just because these products have gotten so much acclaim all around the world and they've never been available in South Africa. So we're talking about Microsoft's tablets and laptop series coming to South Africa. They'll be at the end of the year. I suspect they won't be cheap. Um, no. But, you know, if you've heard about these things or seen them in books and magazines, they will finally become available here. The problem is they're breaking into a pretty tough market, which has been controlled by four or five other manufacturers for years and years. It's going to be very hard for a new manufacturer to come in and make a go of it. Because, of course, every time you sell a laptop, you need to have behind that a whole system of service for repairs and replacements yeah. and all sorts of other things, which is hard to do if you've only sold five of them, you know. If you're Dell and you're selling 500 every week, then that's fine. You can have a huge network of support. Microsoft's going to have to build up that network of support quickly if it wants credibility. Mm. Okay, look out for that. End of the year. Cool. So just uh, touching on other overly priced pieces of technology, <laughs> the Apple Watch LTE versions have launched in South Africa finally. You can go through Vodacom and you can... It's like an additional... It's almost like renting an additional line, but using your same number... Um, for those, the for those who are watching us, I'm busy looking off into the distance because <laughs> Lindsay's basically <laughs> just masturbating. That's all he's doing. Okay. I'm no, looking no, off no, into no, the no, distance. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, yeah. So, like, the first embedded sort of some things that were launched in South Africa. Like, Vodacom's been far ahead on this thing. They worked with Mercedes um, with the launch of the E-Class back in the day, uh, probably about four years ago. 
um, and to to power all like the smart connectivity, smart geofencing sort of things. So it's very really interesting. Then they moved to it was the Gear S3. The Samsung Gear S3 was the next one. Was like the first LTE watch that you could get, um, where you don't have to like actually plug a SIM in. Which mm -hmm. I know the Huawei watch uh, before the GT. Yeah, the, the early Android Samsungs. The yeah. early Samsungs you could actually put a SIM card in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So but now like, like smartwatches fun. don't require physical SIM cards to go in them anymore. We're yeah. in the second generation and, of those. Yeah. Okay. And you can add something like a sideline to your to your contract, and you can activate those things now. But the the pricing for like the the Apple Watch Series three um, starts at like eight thousand rand for the the thirty eight millimeter, and then it goes all the way up for the Series five, which is the current one, um, twelve thousand rand. So, so for okay. two thousand rand more than than a than a full on iPhone SE, um, you can buy a LTE connected Apple Watch right. Series Five. The listeners the should know exactly what my position on this is. I've said it many many times. Here we have like a twelve thousand rand watch. If you've done any research at all, you will know that nobody but nobody uses their Apple Watch for anything except the weather and the time. And occasionally they get notifications about in arriving WhatsApps and things. Nobody actually uses any of the apps they think they're going to use. Nobody actually uses any of the high-end functions they think they're going to use. Nobody actually takes calls on their phone. Nobody makes calls on their phone. My phone does that. I've never made, I've received one call on my phone. You know, no one does that because it's just a doofus thing to do. So feel free to spend 8,000 Rand plus on your watch and tell the time and check the weather, please. Because you know, you, it's basically I want one because I want one, right? Or I want one because Discovery Health will pay it, will, will buy it for me. I mean, there's yeah, no other reason on earth to, to own one of these the things. On this one for you, though. <laughs> I mean, it's just insanity. If you see what you can get in a real smartwatch, I, I don't consider these real smartwatches, by the way. They're just decoration. It's like, it's like, it's like, um, it's like the buying Apple Louis watch Vuitton sneakers. You can buy Louis Vuitton sneakers. Watch. Only a handful of people will know they're the Louis Apple Vuitton Apple Watch you know? is the best smartwatch on the market. Point. <laughs> then smart, but smartwatches themselves are a problem because nobody does anything except yes, check but, uh, the I'm, weather. I'm just okay, saying, so, I'm just saying. But in we're that limited. Open, yeah, so your Apple Watch does a better job of checking the weather. I can assure you the clouds. The little symbol for clouds and sun will be perfectly rendered by an entire studio that Apple supports somewhere in the mountains of Nevada, somewhere to draw the icons for the weather app. Okay, it's the only thing you're going to be looking at, so enjoy. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Right, but you know would be done. able to afford it. No, we would be able to afford it right now. Um, okay. And this, this is very interesting to us who are podcasters. Um, Joe Rogan just signed an exclusive deal to take the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, which is he's kind of like the biggest single person in podcasting right now. Um, that's sure. going exclusive to Spotify from the end of this year or from the fall, the US fall. So like in August, he's shutting down the YouTube stream. Um, you won't find him anywhere else except Spotify. We're not sure if Spotify is going to hide it behind the paywall um i you must be a paying subscriber or if they will i think they will allow it for free listeners but there's a big play i mean spotify snapped up anchor which is the biggest like we upload this podcast through anchor, through anchor. um uh they snapped up gimlet media they snapped up like quite a few podcasts um, premium in brand. the last couple of yeah. brands in a couple of years but this is the first time they've like gone boom we're gonna snatch the biggest guy so this is like when you remember when howard stern went to sirius fm like this is that level of 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 power moves, and I'm interested to see where it goes. It still is even less of a reason for me to deal with the trash Spotify UX. <laughs> so, okay, for those for those who don't necessarily understand the background, Sirius is um, uh, it's like a satellite radio, like having DSTV. So you're gonna pay for it, you subscribe, and then you can get it. It's not just like FM radio where you can tune in. Howard Stern was like the Bonang or something of, of America. He was this ma had this massive following. And he Biggest then left the public radio. airwaves and went to this paid-for subscription radio service. And it worked out rather well. People were very upset about it when it happened. But it ended up working out rather well for him and for everyone else. A lot of people followed yeah. him onto the service and so on. And now Joe Rogan doing the same. I think prior to this, um, Apple also got a high-profile DJ from the U.S. when they launched the new Apple Music and when they wanted to launch the oh, streaming yeah. thing, 
They got yeah. this high-profile DJ from the UK. I forget what his name is. And, of course, we've never heard from him again, but okay, <laughs> never mind. No, uh, also, at great expense. I think the, the Beats 1 radio show was good. That was part of the Beats um, 1 yes, that's right, streaming service. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, this whole kind of getting a marquee kind of uh, player to profile your service is quite a good idea, I reckon. So Spotify, better known as an audio streaming service for music, which is like arrived in South Africa maybe two years ago, I think, and has made quite an impression. We, they don't give us the numbers, unfortunately, so we don't really know how they're doing. But I still maintain, I'm just going to stop you there. I still maintain whatever number that they have is pretty big. And the only reason it's big is because they are free. There is a free ad support here. Yeah, That's the right. only reason people are on Spotify. If you had to pay to get into Spotify, Spotify would have less than a third of the numbers that they have now. Oh, you say the majority are just saying on the free that. service. That's what you say. Yes. Now the app is terrible. Hell okay. yes. But it, that's the only reason why people go there. But I mean, it's so, ch I mean, I don't want to sound like my privilege is showing, but it's like 60 rand a month. It's not exactly big money for having infinite access to infinite music wherever you are all the time. I mean, 60 rand is not a whole lot of money in that sense. You know? No, it's, it's so, not. But you can pay 60 rand for Apple Music, for instance, and have the same experience and even better app experience, in my opinion. But only if you're one of those... 8% of the country who owns one of those i devices, right? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Spotify is the people's platform. Uh, is it? No, I've, I've tried this before, yeah. haven't I? Uh, okay. Well, okay, we're getting a little bit into the week. From Apple now. Anyway, and the point yeah. is that Spotify was one of the premium music streaming services, yeah. if not the premium music services. And then it discovered that podcasting was getting big. So it started making more and more podcast plays. The problem is that the podcasts are still buried inside the interface of their app. They need to surface those podcasts more because that's the future. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's the only way that they're really making money right now um, through the advertising on those podcasts. Mm. Um, yeah. So there's that's why like Apple will never make that sort of play because they don't want to get into that advertising game. Mm -hmm. um, they, they frankly don't need that money. And until they do need it, then they'll probably just switch the little switch on Apple Music and say, let the podcasts flow. <laughs> okay, but let us also remember that as we previously discussed, it's only like 25% of the market is iPhone, right? So <laughs> yeah. the other 75%, if you want to publish a podcast, why don't you target the 75%? Like I'm trying to do, but Lindsay keeps dragging us back into that small entitled 25% enclave. Ah, <laughs> goodness, we are available every day to listen to podcasts, Gavin. And we're available and on I Spotify. Actually, mm. Yeah, and and on Spotify we upload through Anchor, so we are basically so everywhere. So if they take their 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 podcast like private, all of their podcasts, we screwed because then we are only on Spotify, and then oh. I have to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Full oh, disclosure. Man. Anyway, yeah, we're getting a bit in the weeds, Gavin. Um, yeah. Everybody's at home. Everybody's going through video calls. Video calls are hell. I say. Oh, they are. Um, Except when I see you, because I, I miss having coffee hey. morning at the spur with all the ambient noise. <laughs> <laughs> upping, your, upping your video call game is a big thing nowadays. Um, I found a way, because last week, apologies again for the terrible audio. I had revived my old Lenovo laptop, plugged in my headset that I've been using forever, and then realized that the... Real tech audio inside of my Lenovo thing. There's a separate um, microphone jack, which is one of those like really tiny ones. So it doesn't default to the headphone jack's microphone feed. You have to like go into settings and go click it there. So my okay. last week was recorded on the PCs, on the laptop's actual microphone, which is not great. So this week I brought in my Samsung Go mic, which I used to record our podcast on, which has an input for headphones as well. So I can monitor and so it does the audio playback and the recording through the head through the Samsung Go mic, and that has greatly greatly improved the audio quality. What hacks do you have, Gavin? Um, well, um, I unfortunately am subject to endless blim and video meetings, and the problem is that they all want to use their own system. So I'm taking calls on uh, what's the what's the Google one called? Um, Hangouts. Me. I'm taking what? Meets. What, what's Google? It's been it's been called Meets now. Oh, M -E -E -T -E -S. Sorry, sorry. Yes. Right, sorry. Meet. 
Um, and then I've had go to meeting and I've had a lot of Zoom, of course. And now we're doing Skype. We like our Skype. Um, it's been a pain in the ass. So all of them want their own little app. But eventually you realize there's no getting around it. You end up having to download every single one of them. Um, and if I look strange to you, it's because where my desk is positioned, I'm quite far from any natural light. So I make a point of bringing some light into the space, even though I don't need the light to work. I need the light to have a decent kind of video conference going on so you can kind of see what I'm doing. But um, what you want to do there is try and get a warm light bulb if you can. Don't do as I do. I've got an ice cold light bulb for reasons I won't get into. Try and get a warm <laughs> light bulb if you can, not the cold white ones. And then do as I do. Keep a spare set of clothes right next to your desk so you can get back into your slip slops and tracksuit pants straight after your meeting. You can, you can quickly pull on a shirt for the meeting, take it off again, that hang it on the shirt. <laughs> I know, it's like a whole separate set of Skype clothes. Um, that, that is hardcore. I didn't no, know you'd do actually, that. It's and actually I am ridiculous. quite impressed, actually. No, it's actually ridiculous. It's like all for the sake of appearances. Um, and then uh, what else can I suggest? Lighting, really important. Okay, yeah. if you're in a conference with lots of different people, you can turn on your video, greet everybody. If it's people you meet with on a regular basis, they don't need to know what you look like. They already know what you look like. Turn the video mm -hmm. off, turn the mic off while other people are holding forth. This saves you a bit of bandwidth, keeps your system more stable and reliable. It's, your computer's having to do a lot less processing if the video isn't coming in and going out. So turn off the audio and video while people are presenting or doing whatever they're doing. Turn it on again when you actually need to interact with people. This is what I recommend. Yeah. It works for me. Uh, so, also, if you so leave Samsung things muted, mm, you don't accidentally mouth off and they don't hear your dogs barking and your, <laughs> your breakfast <laughs> cooking over on the stove and so on. <laughs> So the, the Samsung Go mic is not available on Take A Lot right now, but the Samsung Meteorite, which is like a little puck, it's about the size of a large plum. Okay, spell, <laughs> not a plum, spell sorry, that, a large, a large plum. Spell Samson, that brand so name for us, Samson. S-A-M-S-O-N. Yeah. So the Meteorite right. USB condenser microphones, all of these plug in via USB. Um, and I mean, the drivers get installed automatically and your system should recognize it and you'd be good to go in like maybe 30 seconds or whatever, since depending on the speed of your computer. Um, and then there's a separate headphone input that you can monitor the audio coming through and that will also pull the audio from um, whatever you're listening to. So you don't have to like plug in an extra set of stuff. Uh, and that is 710 Rand now on Take A Lot, 45% off. Get it now. I don't know how long this price is going to last. Um, on we the also, lighting front, We also like, don't know how long lockdown is going to last. So maybe you want to make yes, that investment now. <laughs> that's true. Um, on the lighting side, uh, you want to get light coming at you with like 45 degrees on your face. So you get like nice contouring. <laughs> so <you're looking> <laughs> <awesome>. <laughs> Nice contouring. Okay. This is as bad as me keeping formal clothes next to my desk. Uh, uh, okay. you, go hardcore, you bring a white sheet of paper and put it uh -huh. on the desk in front of you so that you're getting okay. a little bit of bounce to just get under the chin so you don't get like that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. I might be in the department my, for that. Yeah. My neck sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. And then you want to get you wanna get the the camera at eye level or as close to eye level as you can, so that like no one's looking up your nostril. <laughs> yeah, don't look uh, down. It it's just up it. Yeah. yeah, it's it's more, it's more flattering. And then mm. you, on Skype you can blur the background. On Zoom you can integrate a different sort of background. I'm not too waxed yeah. on Zoom, Gavin. No, I, I don't bother really. Oh, you can apparently drop in your own background, but don't go to all that trouble. You know, just w use yourself to fill up the picture as much as possible, and it won't matter what's going on in the background unless there's something truly heinous going on behind you. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, like, last audio tip, Gavin, you use a, head, a gaming headset with a boom mic. Um, yes. When you, the closer you move the mic to your mouth, and the more you can, like, move it in front of your mouth, the better it will sound. So then you don't have to shout as loud and you don't have to worry about like, because I know on headsets, um, you have the mic that's in line, in the inline cable, um, that sometimes bounces against your your shirt and stuff and you get like mm. really weird sounds going off. 
Yeah. Yes. I mean, if you if you're going to rely on the sound on the PC itself, that means the microphone that's built into the PC and the speakers on the PC. It means you can't really control the sound experience. So if it's important, for example, if you're presenting to people or some important information, if it's an important meeting, you might want to consider better quality equipment. You know, if you're just chatting to your children or your parents or whatever, and it's informal, you can probably make do with the video and sound on the PC itself. It's only if you've got professional level communications going on that you might want to consider yeah. upgrading your things. I have one last audio tip, it's something I've only discovered recently. Um, and this one relates to Zoom specifically, but I think there are shortcuts on the other systems as well. You leave the mic on mute all the time, okay? And then when you want to speak on Zoom, you just hold the space bar down. It takes the mic off mute, you talk, you release the button. It's exactly like talking on a walkie-talkie, you know? Hi, Lindsay, coming in, over, release the button kind of thing. <laughs> you so that's have great. blown my mind. Exactly. So that's a much better way than trying to <laughs> mute and unmute the button. And then, you you know, you start talking, but it's not unmuted. And so you just hold the space bar on Zoom. I think there are equivalents for Skype and uh, meeting uh, Google's meetups or whatever they're called. What's Google called? Meet Meeting. Meet. Meetings. Meet. Meets. 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 Yes. Okay. Um, let's, not, let's not mention that go to meeting piece of trash <laughs> yeah, at your webinar, yeah, yeah. GI webinar last week and it was like a go to webinar link um, yeah. who makes go to meeting I forget I forget who's behind this not, but not oh Cisco, it was atrocious yeah 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 yeah, Cisco, I had, yeah. Cisco was Webex. yeah 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 oh it's all been horrible uh, yeah one last little one before we sign off um, those of you who are doing those zoom hangouts like the zoom birthday parties and those sort of thing pro tip Get a Bluetooth speaker that has a mic built into it. Um, put the Bluetooth speaker in the middle of the table of the crowd that you are um, right. meeting with, like your family at your house, um, and then have the, the the laptop maybe sitting a bit further away so you can right. get like the full view of everything. And then you have the right. audio and the microphone right ah, there amongst the party. <laughs> yes, yeah, good, it's good, a, good. Uh, it's a game changer. I did my my mother's my mother in law's birthday birthday thing like that. Um, and yeah, it was a good time. Okay, so next week we'll deal with how to do this using just your phone. Assuming you've just got a phone, we'll look yeah. at maybe WhatsApp and one or two of the others and see the best setup for your phone. I find the cameras on the phone actually work much better than the cameras on the PCs. That's what I found. Yeah, but we'll we'll especially we'll, if you have a Mac. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, Macs are particularly bad. Eh, but let's not go there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think cool. we're done, eh? Yes, we are done. Thank you very much, Gavin. And I will chat to you next week. Yes. Have a good week. Stay safe out there, guys. All right. We want to see you back here next week. Stay safe. Lockdown Over and out. Yes.